Welcome back everybody to Chernobyl. Oh, sorry, sorry, Rimworld. Last episode we did build a nuclear reactor though, which I now have uh, to work out how the fuck to turn it on. We've built a reactor control computer, that's this one here. And ideally, we can refine some uranium and turn this bad boy on and watch it melt a hole in the floor. So apparently the two biggest things to watch out for when building a nuclear reactor is A, fire, and B, radiation poisoning. What we're looking at right now is, uh, we have protection against neither of them, let's put it that way. Did we get the fire poppers in the end? Um, because that was the one thing I actually wanted to get before we, before we, yeah we did, okay cool. Might stick down a couple of these for hopefully obvious reasons. Now, we've also got to, and I probably should have done this beforehand, I will admit. We sh probably should have made the radiation detectors, and we probably should have made the radiation suits. But, let's not worry about that for the time being, that's, that's for tomorrow, okay? What we gotta do now is refine some uranium. Put it in here, and uh, hope for the best, I guess might be the best way to phrase it. Okay, this is going to be horrible, isn't it? Why do I get the feeling this is going to be absolutely horrible? So, okay, so we're making z uh, zero kilowatts. We've got zero degree temperature. We've got 100% cooling. We have 0% in the turbine and 0% in the control rods. Do we have to research control rods before we move on with the nuclear power? So, a control rod actuator, I guess, just automates the process of of stopping and starting the reactor or makes it a little more streamlined i'm going to assume we don't need it seeing as it is a completely separate research category so i'm just going to blitz ahead with what we were doing before um and just sort of pray and hope for the best that this does work because we have some serious power issues we've talked about this for a while we've kind of gotten over it a little bit by building this crazy solar array but the downside to this area is we've got we're, we're, we're slowly getting through our food supply we've got 89 days we did have like 120 a couple of days ago don't know how that works don't don't worry about doing the maths there We've got, uh, of course, crop as well being cloned. We need to clone Eagle, but we just don't have enough power in the grid. The grid right now, minus 5,382 watts out of the 8,000 necessary. So, uh, oh, oh, sorry, we've got 8,000 stored and we've got minus 5,300. So, obviously, that's not going to last very long. You don't have to do maths to, uh, to know that. So, if we want to be able to clone Eagle, which is a long process, we've got to get this thing turned on is what I'm getting at. How do we, is that like a, uh, is that like a, a reactor refinery? Is there anything along those lines? Uh, we've got blast doors, we've got reinforced walls, we need depleted uranium, cool. Provides full shielding against radiation, uh, okay, that could be useful. Uh, a little bit pointless right now, oh god, you need a storage facility for nuclear rods as well. Shit. Um, we might have to repurpose Jilp's bedroom. Now, I've been told as well, according to the, the World of Darkness, which is where Jilp and the vampires all come from and what they're based on, radiation kills vampires really quickly. So what I'm going to do here is we're just going to, we're going to take a little bit of this bedroom here. We're going to move this bed over because this bedroom was too large anyway. We're going to move this here. We're going to move this shit over here and we're just going to cut this room in half. We're going to use half of it. Sorry, but your bedroom is being repurposed uh, for, for a nuclear power plant there. I'm sure I'll understand. We'll move all these seats as well. They're not, they're not entirely necessary right now. I don't think he gets many visitors inside his vampire paradise. Um, right, let's also excuse me, I need to reinstall this plant pot. Move that shit over there. Uh, get rid of the room stats. Get rid of the room stats. Thank you. And we'll reinstall this one. I don't really care where. Right, we'll do that. And then we'll build like a wall along here. That gives him a decent sized bedroom. And it gives us a big old nuclear area to work with. I'll get rid of basically this whole wall, I reckon. Because this wall's not going to do anything anyway. Apparently we need nuclear shielding. So we might as well just rip all this shit out and, uh, and, and build a nuclear sort of defense around this when we get to that point, when, whenever we get some depleted uranium. So how the hell then do we make regular old uranium? It's in here, right? Uh, yeah, so look at this. We've got uranium fuel rods. We need uranium. So we need to process uranium into uranium pellets. We then need to uh, make uranium pellets into uranium fuel rods. Okay, cool. So, 10 uranium makes how many uranium pellets? Uh, it doesn't say the output on the bill. Fantastic. I'm going to assume it makes 100. So, I'm going to assume by... Well, we'll, we'll test that first, actually. Who's our, who's our crafter? We'll just make sure we've got a decent process going on here. Amba Damba Damba Pamba. I would like you, if you don't mind, to very quickly make us some uranium fuel. And let's just see how this works then. So, I'm hoping that'll make 100 pellets, and then we can immediately just keep the bill one-to-one. -one. Uh, what have you got there? 30. Oh, well, that's annoying, isn't it? Uh, so we're gonna have to do four of these for every one of these. I guess we could just do until we have X, right? So let's do until we've got, like, um, how many fuel rods are we gonna need, though? So we need 100 uranium pellets per fuel rod. Um, and let's make, like, so let's aim to get five fuel rods. So that means we're gonna need 500 uranium, threes, 30s into 500. Oh, God, I can't do maths off the top of my head. Don't make me do this shit. Um, so five is gonna give us 30, blah, uh, blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna need, like... You know, like 15 of these fuckers, right? Hang on a minute. Um, 
no, we're going to need like 18 of these fuckers, aren't we? I don't remember. Like, it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal, okay? I'm not doing maths off the top of my head. I've just woken up. I've got the flu. I can't do maths anyway. So putting me on the spot like this is is not is not going to suit anyone. And what I say, I want to make five of these things. That might also be too many. Um, so let's do until we've got X. X being five in this situation. Do I need to build the storage first? Do you think we need to build, like, uranium storage before we start churning out control rods? Uh, it's 450 steel and six components. Now, which way around do we need that to be? I don't really know. So I'm going to do it like that, just so it's in the middle of the room, so that we can access it from sort of all sides, just in case, you know, things don't quite work. Sarcophagus type A. Oh. A concrete structure designed to contain the molten core of a nuclear reactor that's gone a core meltdown. I see. So if shit starts going wrong, we need to whack one of these around our core. Um, I assume... Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm also going to take out this wall. Just because if the reactor goes into meltdown, the last thing we want to have to do is remove structures around our nuclear power plant to be able to put a sarcophagus around it. I think that would be not exactly very good for reaction times, huh? Um, I'll reroute that cooling cable as well because that's going to be kind of... Or the, the, the control cable because that's going to be a pain in the ass. So can we just build that straight over the top? Does that work now? Uh, no. Maybe we have to also sever the pipes. That would suck. Okay, well, we'll cross that hurdle when we get there, which hopefully we never will. So let's not worry about it too much. All right, um, we need some more floor tiles there as well. I mean, it might be a nuclear reactor, but I don't want it to look like shit is my main point here. Can we smooth off walls that are outside the building area? Um, no. <laughs> shit, that's annoying, huh? Um, I wish I had kind of built this reactor slightly, slightly over. I need to get the Minify Everything mod. I don't normally use the Minify Everything mod, just because it is, uh, in my opinion, it's somewhat OP. You know, the game's designed in a very specific way that you wouldn't be able to, you know, uninstall a very, very high-tech steel research bench. So I'm not actually using it right now, despite the fact that people have suggested it to me a lot. But I may, just for the experimentation with these nuclear reactors, because I don't know how this mod works, it would kind of suck if I built this in the wrong place and then we had to, you know, decommission everything. I think we've been very lucky with some of the guesses so far. Human meat rotted away in storage. Where the fuck were we storing human meat that it's rotted away? Oh, up there. Okay, that's reasonable. We don't really, we're not really interested in that anyway, are we? Let's be honest. We're not feeding anyone human meat yet. Although, it would make for good nutrient paste. Huh. Yeah, I should have already considered that earlier. We, we could have fed our prisoners on that. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. I still like our nuclear lab. Don't get me wrong. I still like the layout of it. I still think, it, I think, it's, still, still think it's a very cool structure. I, what I would love to do is ideally build uh, with the reinforced wall, wherever the fuck it looks. Let's get back to uh, recreation a second. Uh, what's well, our rim atomics. We want to build with the DU wall, with the depleted uranium wall here, probably something along these lines. We probably want to do something like that, yeah? So that, that way, if we do go into Meltdown, it, it's fully protected. And our people on the other side aren't going to be just completely blasted. So real shame you can't have that a block away and then separate that off as well. Um, you can't, can you? We, we, we definitely can't, right? Uh, no, we can't. Like, it has to be exactly adjacent to it, which does suck a little bit. But that's okay. We'll plan that out later on. Because obviously we're not going to have any depleted drain until the reactor actually runs in the first place. How are we doing with them control rods then? Uh, Amber Namba Pamba Damba. Where are you, my friend? There you are. Um, you're, you're in bed. That's okay. That's understandable, really. Can I see any control rods here? Uh, almost certainly not. Have we built any yet? Uranium fuel rods? No, none yet. Okay. What else do we need for that? It's just uranium pellets. Oh, make uranium pellets until X. Oh, okay. Hang on. That's until X. I'm, I'm thinking we've got to do it X amount of times. So, hang on. Uranium fuel rods. We've got, uh, so what was that again? That's 100 pellets each. If I make five, that's 500 pellets. It's very straightforward. When you actually read, it turns out the game gets a lot, lot easier, huh? Turns out things are just so much more simple when you actually read things. Right, there we go. So that should make it 30 at a time still. Shouldn't matter about that. Oh, God, look at these fucking chunks. This quarry is really not going well. We're digging down to the core of the earth. The storage chamber is complete. Okay, so what the fuck is this that I'm looking at? Oh, my God. Loading, unloading, manage. Uh, okay, don't know what that is. We'll ignore that for a minute. Allow crack, non crack, crack processable, non processable. So, I guess a cracked uranium fuel rod is probably somewhat volatile. At least you'd, you'd assume that, right? We'll probably have some negative effects here. Fine. Grid access is massive now. We've got such a. The, the whole reason I want to set this up is so that we have a solid, consistent power supply. We've gone from minus 5,000 to like 10,000 watts excess in no time at all. It's, it's very strange. We've got a weird grid going on here. Um. So, have we started making... Wait, whoa, 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 where are you? Right, start making some fuel rods, my man. Start churning these out. Let's see what we can do with this. Okay, here we go. It takes a while, apparently, to build these things. Like, like genuinely quite a long time here. Uh, is that getting the bonuses from these cabinets? It is, as well. Okay, fair enough. Now, our researchers apparently have nothing to do. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's finish off the scientist cabinet. Not only does that give a bonus to research, it also gives... Wait, what? 
Uh, what? Missing research? Just says missing. Uh, missing what exactly? Uh, oh, oh, oh uh, turned off. Duh. I was just thinking, like, what the hell research are we missing? That was working fine. It's because we got that, we got the workbench powered off. So that's, that's kind of my fault there. Now that we've got a little bit of excess power, I will go back and finish off this scientist cabinet. We've already started it anyway. Gives a bonus to research speed. Gives a bonus to work speed as well. Um, I guess because you've got science making things more efficient. Just some bullshit excuse. I have no idea what 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 exactly causes it. Oh, our power. Oh, good lord. As the sun goes down, so does the base's power grid. How close is the crop clones being finished? Three point one days. 3.1 days, we can bring back our Sith Lord. Right in time, he can turn on the generator. You know, you sort of, when you get, like, a town mayor to, uh, to, like, snip the rope on a new building being opened? That's what Krupp's gonna do. Resurrected Krupp is gonna snip the rope on a re Well, hopefully not snip anything on a nuclear reactor. He's gonna turn it on, though. Um, how are we looking in terms of the grid? These batteries, we've got so many batteries, we should just get through the night, I think, with... This crazy amount of power. You've gotta remember, the windmills are still gonna run as well and keep things nicely topped up. So... I want to see if we can survive through the night with all of this shit turned on. Eagle Throog is about to take the fuel rods over into the fuel storage. And we'll see what happens there. Oh, that's very fancy. I like that. Some sort of, like, nice containment facility. That's pretty good. So how do we, uh, so loading, unloading. Can we automate the system by which they're loaded into the reactor? What I'm saying is, should I have put this adjacent to the reactor? Because that would suck if, if, if those are supposed to be touching, huh? I might have to get a minify mod thing. Because like I said, I don't really know how this works. I sort of, thought, sort of thought it would be a storage facility. I didn't realize it might automatically also move shit over there. That's fine. It's not a big deal. Right, so how do we load the rods into the... We've got, we've got Alpha here. Um, oh, that's just the, the name of the plan. Okay, got it. So that's Alpha. And I assume that connects up. Okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense then. Fine. Uh, how, do we, how do we start you off? Scram the reactor core cool when temperature reaches unsafe levels or a solar flare is detected. Right, so if the, obviously if the coolant isn't running, turn that shit off, I think is what it's saying. Uh, right, Thor turbine is good. Uh, that's fine. Raise power limit, lower power limit for the transformer. Okay. There's a lot to take in here, and I don't really know where to start. Um, I suppose we could also start on that. I, I want these scientist cabinets to be done first. Then we'll start researching, like, control and actuators and things. So that we can more automatically get things going. We have less than a day left until the first ever cloning experiment is complete. Let's see if things go as I intended. Now, to make sure things are going as intended, we're going to have to take old Krupp. The old, the old cursed body of Krupp, which barely has any of his spirit clinging on here. And we're going to have to strip him for parts. We're going to take away all of his important stuff here. So he's got left eye, left lung, liver. We need to just take all of this shit away. Obviously, we can't just pull out his liver without him dying. So we need to wait for new crop to be ready before this crop has to disappear. Um, right, so let's see what we've got here. So we want to harvest uh, left ear and left eye. So left, 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 left. Where is that? Left ear. Um, excuse me. Remove, remove part. Should I look for that instead? Remove part. Left lung. Okay, he can live with one lung, that's fine. He's, he's, a, he's an undead anyway, so I think we should be fine here. I'm just going to go through bells, it's probably a lot fucking easier, huh? Um, so we'll give a left ear. Left, left ear. Oh, we're going to have to install a new part on him. Are you serious? We can't remove it. That's annoying. Okay, we'll install a new left ear. We need to install a new left eye. Um, can we just gouge it out, huh? Harvest right eye, there we go. Um, there wasn't a harvest option on that left ear, was there? Nope. Okay, so we're going to get his eye. We've got his ear. We've got his lung. Then we need his uh, his liver as well. So if we've got another liver, we'll just whack in a new liver. We could remove it. Would that kill him, though? I mean, it wouldn't matter anyway, because we're ready to transfer his brain scan over to a new guy anyway. So it's, I guess it's not a huge deal. As long as it's the last bill we're doing, shouldn't be a big deal. Right, okay, so you, my friend, are going to go into the hospital. But this is quite a high-tech hospital, so the chance of us failing is actually quite slim. We've got an absolute bulk load of medicine as well now. So I'm actually not too concerned about things going a little tits up here. Right, Krupp, where are you, my friend? He's going to come and rest. Hurry, Krupp. Okay, then we'll get... Uh, who's our doctor these days? I can never remember. Um, of course, it's fucking Amber Namba Damba, the best colonist I think we've ever had in the whole of Rimod. We, we find this a lot in series, huh? Do you just get one super skilled character doing absolutely everything? It's pretty insane. I, I wish the skills were a bit more of a, a spread out. You, you either get characters who are complete fucking garbage, or characters who are so good that losing them cripples your entire colony. That, that, it's what, the one thing Rimod really struggles with. Is there's, no, there's no middle ground, is there? There's no middle ground. It's either, it's either all or nothing. Right. The first surgery on old crop begins. We're whipping out... What is this part we're whipping out? We're removing his lung. Please don't fail, because this one could... Perhaps it's best to leave the bodies of the living dead alone. What the fuck do you mean? What the fuck do you mean? You're telling me I can't... Terror? Oh my god, is there like an automatic... 
Is there like an automatic defense system? We we can't we can't remove his body parts. Oh god. Okay. Um, that could be a problem. We're gonna have to bury him with all of our cool tech. Oh, that sucks. Okay. Fair enough though. Honestly, like like fair enough. Um, I guess that's a, a way of balancing things. Otherwise, you could raise someone dead and just fill them with a bunch of bionics. We'll try it once more because this time we're not removing a component. We're installing a, a new one, so maybe this will work. But I imagine the same thing's going to happen here. Um, well, if this doesn't work, we'll just stop the whole thing. Yeah, okay, fuck that. Right, okay, perhaps it's best to leave the bodies of the living dead alone. Sure. Absolutely fine. That sucks a little bit, but that's okay. I, I guess at least we didn't install the cool stuff into him, you know, like the like, like the advanced bionic arms or like the skin replacements or anything like that, the AI. That's fine. So we're missing out on the laser detection scanner. We're missing out on the Orion Cornea, the Shadow Runner, the Virus Killer, which are all very, very good tech. It's nothing we can't find again. It's nothing we certainly can't build ourselves eventually when we find a better way to get resources besides just digging and filling up our entire base with chunks. By which, I mean, I've also started hauling all the trunks as well. That's, that's something I've started to uh, remove here. I imagine they're all just going into this big stockpile here, huh? Um, oh my god, that's a lot of chunks. 404. I, I have got stackable chunks, well, because I think it should be part of the base game. Uh, 789 marble chunks, and then we've got 404 limestone chunks as well. Jesus, this is kind of absurd, huh? It's a little bit ridiculous. How are we looking? We are looking at 5.5 hours remaining until brand new Krupp 2.0 is ready. Then we need to transfer the brain over. Then we need to give him his lightsaber back. Excellent. Scientist cabinet is done. Right, so let's go ahead and stick one of those down very briefly. Uh, what is that under? That's like misc, I believe. So these take advanced components. Yeah, they do. They're very expensive, but they are very, very, very good in terms of the work speed bonuses they give. So we're going to put that there to give bonuses to obviously, you know, the, the, the room atomics machining table, the regular fabrication bench. We can move this room around a lot based on our cabinets uh, later on. For the time being, they'll just get one of these down. And they also give research speed bonuses. So building one over here would be also pretty fantastic um, if we've got the components right off a bit. That for now because I'd rather have the work speed for components because, you know, it's going to help out more if we've got faster components being built to build the other one. That's just very straightforward. Okay, perfect. Right, scientist cabinet is done. It's going to buff up work speed by what? Another another 30%. It's obviously very, very powerful. Um, a little bit OP, but they are very expensive too. So how are we looking here? We are making advanced components too. In fact, we've got enough to start this one too. Absolutely get on with it. Rim Atomics, let's start these actuators. The one thing I want to get done today, if nothing else, along with cloning crop, is starting up the reactor. I might have to go and look up a guide though, because I'm actually kind of stumped on what we do next. Status. Finished human. We're not ready yet though. Old crop needs to go, so we can transfer his consciousness over to new crop. Everybody, you can all line up for this, because this is a big moment. This is a big moment. Okay. Crop, goodbye. Get ready to... We're doing it Palpatine style. So Palpatine in, in the Dark Empire, uh, basically, in, which is like a series of, of novels, cloned himself and then transferred his consciousness to clone bodies to avoid death. That's what Krupp's doing. That's exactly what Krupp's doing. Where's Bonnet? Bonnet, I need you to do us all a favor and uh, get rid of him. Goodbye. Original Krupp. Nice knowing you, but new Krupp is born. Boom. And can we... We can't like whip out these components now, can we? No, absolutely not. Unless... Unless we got a priest with resurrect, we could resurrect Krupp. Although he's still undead though, isn't he? So I think the same thing would happen. Okay, it wouldn't matter. Ignore me. Don't worry, don't worry about that. I don't think it will work. All right. Let's get the body out of here. Because I think the last thing you want to see when you resurrect is your old dead body. Oh, is it Sith Lord? I'm sure he wouldn't give a fuck. Bonnet, awaken. Okay, Bonnet can't awaken. We need someone who's capable of doing hauling. Uh, Jilp, Jilp, awaken, awaken, awaken our man. Okay, here we go. Krupp. The return of... Of crop. Scrooge Delion. He is born with no skills, because of course that's, that's how things work here. You will be called Crop Voosh 2.0. 2.0. Should we just call him Crop 2? No, it's it's still the original Crop, because we're going to apply the, the brain scan to him. So apply brain scan template to. Oh, well, we have to apply it using someone, huh? Um, so where's Donitz? Da oh, so sorry, not done. It's where? Where is our? Where is Amber Damba Damba the the head? Okay, you drop that on the floor here. Joe, go and put. He's gonna put the, the the genome sequence template back into the fridge. That's a good idea, just in case we lose them. We should really clone all of the big five, so we've constantly got their templates. Right. Okay. Who is the person capable of applying his brain template? That's Amber Damba Pamba. Right. Go and get this up. Apply it to crop. Here we go. The last bit of the surgery. We're transferring the consciousness of our old Sith Lord over to our new one. This is like a Sith holocron or something we've saved him on. Is it going to work? My god, I hope it does. I hope this fucking works, because I'm not sure I can take it. Come on. He's back. He's fucking back. 
Psychopath Sith Master. Now, I imagine he's lost all of his... Yeah, he's lost all of it. He needs to reconnect to the Force. But you know what? I'll fucking take it. Kropvush. He, he returns. Now, as for old Krupp's body, because it will still contain a shit ton of power, because it still has potentially uses to us, especially if this new Krupp ends up being like a rejected clone or something like that, I'm going to stick him in the freezer next to Donitz. Now, Donitz, we can just straight up resurrect because he's not rotten. He was never under Bonitz's control. But this body still has a lot of dormant power that I think we should be very careful about what we do with it. Uh, it's got a lot of a lot of super overpowered tech. It's still got Bonnet's influence. It's still got a massive connection to the Force. If an enemy Necromancer turns up and blasts it with a with a resurrection or something like that, we've got a real enemy on our hands. So let's haul him, get into the freezer. People are going to be after this body. I'm, I'm, I think we're going to be swarmed by Necromancers after for this very valuable corpse. Stick it in the freezer. We'll decide what we can do with it later on. Maybe a Paladin could resurrect him. I'm not sure how that would work. Um, that would be that'd be very confusing. You're right, crap. How's it going, my friend? We need to get that lightsaber back at some stage, right? Go get your clothes. Wow, can't believe that actually fucking worked. There he is. Um, you need to get yourself... What's he wearing? <laughs> Why are you wearing that? Oh my god. <laughs> Welcome back to the colony, huh? Good god, man. Um, so we can't actually really use the lightsaber yet, can he? Because he's not really trained in it. But we can we can equip it, if nothing else. Um, activate. Wow, there he is. Back to his full glory, huh? So we do need to up update and uh, obviously get him a bunch of XP so that he can reconnect his, his abilities to the Force with this new body here. Let's go ahead and give him some skills to do as well. He needs to build up his skill set also. Now this bit of science has also shown us something pretty impressive here. The reconditioning pods, we can not only use to give them good traits temporarily, but if we clone them or scan their brain while that trait is implanted into them without it, you know, before it disappears... Then we can clone them and basically upgrade them over the long term. Now, the only reason he didn't come up with all of his skills and his passions or whatever is because of Bonnet's influence. You know, that's the price you got to pay for being resurrected, essentially. However, with someone like Bonnet, who, who won't be obviously resurrected in the first place, or even someone like Jeff, for example, they have some... Uh, okay, let's, let's pick someone with some garbage traits. So, so Rednecks, for example. We could remove the Jealous trait, scan his brain, so he would come in literally exactly as he is right now with all of his skills, all of his passions, whatever. Re resurrect or, or clone him after that to to basically permanently seed that into his character. It's a very long process. Like like to to actually build a good character with this, we're looking at the best part of a year because it's twenty days per cloning process. Plus, you have to recondition them in the first place. So, if you wanted to give them three very good, very powerful traits, we would have to clone them three times over, and each clone would have to receive the new bit of reconditioning. This might be a really really fun long term task. I'm not sure who you want to do it to though. Should we upgrade crap? I mean, Krupp was always going to be the weapon of the colony. He always was the weapon of the colony. You know, firing off force powers, shooting in lightning bolts, choking out big old giraffe demons. Maybe we should keep cloning him. Maybe we should just keep going over and over and over. Now, my only concern with that is maybe it'll get corrupted. I don't know how the cloning mod works. I don't know if, if you clone a clone, because when they're cloned, they get the, they get the backstory backgrown. So I don't know if you can clone a backgrown colonist. I have no idea why you wouldn't be able to, but I'm just saying there might be some something that they've they've sort of cleverly added here to maybe make them a mutant or or sort of have the clone fail or something like that. Obviously, it's a big risk as well because these clones take 21 days. We get power outage, solar flare, whatever else. We've lost all our work up to that stage. So get him in the conditioning pod. I like psychopath. I think that's a fine trait. I like Sith Master. Naturally, I think that's a good trait. Do we want to add something? Do you want to make him bloodlust or say um? Great memory, fast learner, something like that. Lo learning speed plus 75% to cancel out the fact that he hasn't got anything. Maybe transhumanist. Just fill him full of a bunch of body parts and turn him into our little Darth Vader here. Um, I'm going to go with fast learner to start off with. Let's accept that. It needs to. It's going to take a day for this trait to be implanted into his memory. It's a 90% success chance. After we've done with that, we're then going to have to rescan his brain and resequence his genome and then stick him back. Or oh, maybe we don't need to. Hang on, maybe we don't need to resequence his genome. Maybe we just scan the new brain, use the old genetic template so we're not corrupting things, and then clone original Krupp's body, but with new Krupp's brain. This is, this is fucked up. This is, this is weird. We, we've gone into we a weird territory here. Cannot load fuel into reactor type A, no designated slot. So do I have to do something with this one now? No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, Thor turbine is fine. There's no, there's no options on that whatsoever, so we can safely ignore that one. High voltage transformer. There are th options on this, but I'm not going to fuck around that at least until we've booted the damn thing up, you know? Reactor console is, is fine. There's actually nothing we can do with that either. Can we, can we get someone to... Oh, manage. Okay, fine. Fair enough then. This must be what I was missing. Uh, Jeff, manage reactor. Let's see what we've got. Oh, no. It's actual science. Right. Okay. So we want to... No, 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 no. Uh, 
Mox? No, I don't want Mox. Right, so maybe put a fuel rod, just one fuel rod in the center. And then I would assume it'd be more efficient to actually separate them out, or out around like that. Something like that, maybe. Um, in fact, we could probably do that slightly more efficient. Uh, assuming this is how it works, the most efficient pattern would be would be that, right? Because then you're maximizing the area and the coolage. I don't know how this works, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do here. I'm just going to stick one in for the time being. So we can see the temperature. We can see the fuel. We can see the cooling. Okay, that's good. Turbine, power, and then radiation. Basically, looking at this, keep everything low. Now, what is this one up here? This is a slider. We got, we got some sort of slider. What does that mean? Uh, is that like decay or something? It doesn't actually tell us what this is for. Okay, I'm just going to crank that up to 100.00. So, uh, we're overclocking a nuclear reactor. Now, nah, I'm good. We'll keep it at 50% for the time being. What is this? What, what is this? Oh, that lows increase it very, a very small amount. I see. Right, fair enough. Let's launch it at 10%. I assume the lower that, seeing as it's default to zero, I assume this is something to do with the, with the, the amount of uh, amount of energy we're trying to get out of it, the, the, the capacity it's running at. So if we're running at 100% capacity, you've got to make sure you've got like efficient cooling or efficient, you know, power management, things like that. We'll run it at its, its, its lowest setting to start with. We'll run it at like a 5%, okay? See how it does, and then try and balance it very carefully based on, on the information we're getting out of things here. Start. Okay, starting up. Now what? We need to load some fuel rods into it, right? Uh, core is still active. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Managed reactor. Turn that shit off. Uh, how do we... Scram? Shut down and cold. Cool. Right. So I guess we... No, no fuel... No fuel assembly available. What the fuck is that? What's a fuel assembly? Um, from two reactor scrams. Okay. So scram allows us to... I see... So it allows us to turn it off whilst it's fully fueled and set to 100% power, right? And I guess our colonists can't do that because it'd be too hot to handle. Otherwise, that makes sense. Cool. Um, right. So, so what is a what is a reactor? Sorry, what do we need again? Like a sort of a fuel something? Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything here. Okay, fine. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. I, I mean, I know we haven't got any coolant either. It says coolant co uh, console, right? Coolant pipe is just to this. So you've got no form of active cooling, I guess. It's all just passive. Fine. Um, we could go, like, water cooling, which I assume would be efficient, but we won't, we won't worry about that. We won't worry about that. Just gotta work out to actually get this thing turned on. I feel like I should have built this actually attached to the reactor, although I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, what does it say again if we try and do that? No fuel assembly available. Right. Let's go and Google that. Ah, okay, we have to remove the rods out of storage first. Right, I thought we needed some sort of, like, fuel assembly port or machine that would automatically load it in. No, it's, it's much more simple than that. We literally just remove the rods from the storage, stick them into the generator by hand. Fair enough. Okay, so we've got one rod in the generator. Manage reactor. Let's turn this bad boy on and see what happens. Okay, my god, is it... It's very warm. Okay, it's, it seems to run at about half. That's fine. Uh, 315 degrees C. How much power are we output, though? That's the real question. Um, RPM, 3. It's going to take a while, I guess, to boot up here. We're making 92 watts. Uh, I feel like we're, t we're spending more energy actually running the reactor right now. So let let's, let's, uh, let's increase the speed. And what does this show? Is this like an overview of what's going on? So we've got like one, one core on, 3. What does that mean? I don't know what the hell that means. Um, is that like the, the heat or something? So let's crank things up here. Oh, God. Oh, oh, God. Okay, we're making a lot of... Oh, you know what? This is fine. Actually, to be fair, we can really... Oh, we can crank this up, no problem. Look at that. There we go. 315 degrees. We're using 7% of our cooling. Right, got it. Fuel is, is super high. Um, can I crank that down to just like 100% or at least 99.9%? .9 I feel like having 101% on a nuclear reactor is a bad idea. There we go. Let's just roll with that. Make it 1.75 kilowatts. So we're making all the energy we'll ever need then at that stage is what you're telling me. Um, grid access stored none. Okay, now what? Turbine power. Power output. Power limit. Is this going into the grid? Uh, no, grid access is still minus 6,000 watts. Okay. Um, although, to be fair, we're only making 1.7 thousand watts anyway. Power output, yeah, 1,700 watts. So even with a nuclear reactor on, we're still not breaking even. Is this what I'm hearing right now? Grid access stored, minus 6,000 watts. That's making 1.7 thousand watts. Oh, God. D uh, what happens if we do that? Change the power limit for this transformer used for charging power distribution over multiple power... What happens if I do that? Are we just going to blow up the base? I have... Fuck it. Raise the power limits. Ra raise the power limits. It's not doing anything. It's not It's not doing anything. Okay. Lower power limits? Oh, right. This power limit is 200 kilowatts. So we're just not producing that much. I guess maybe this has to rev up a little bit more. RPMs... I mean, rotation per minute is 63. Cool. Um, 
7% with one turbine. Do I need to put more fuel in it? I feel like the problem is we haven't got enough fuel rods to power the turbine. So what we need to do is we need to put more fuel in the reactor, get the turbine spinning up faster, max this out. So we need to build more transformers as well, I think, is actually the problem. So that's only putting out 1,000 watts. We're not even maxing out the first transformer yet because this isn't spinning fast enough. At least is what I assume is going on. Okay, fine. Got it. Let's power off the reactor then. Let's stick... We could put in maximum amount of fuel rods and then just start it at the lowest value, right? And then just keep churning up until we find a nice little balance. That could be good. I'll have to look up online some, like, efficient nuclear reactor strategies. But this is cool. This It, it seems fairly self-explanatory. Especially as I'm just going off, you know, this is all back of the napkin shit. Right, scram it. Turn that shit down. There you go. Get that, get that boy turned off. Right, so now it's cool. I assume we can load some more power into it, right? So, first things first, then. We need more fuel rods. I mean, that, that's just sort of the essential thing here. Um... Why are we not making any more uranium fuel rods, though? Uh, oh, because we don't probably have a dedicated crafter, huh? Yeah, because your job is to do absolutely fucking everything. Right. So we'll start, probably because they're also making this stuff as well, we'll start making some more fuel rods. And how many can it potentially hold is the, is the next question. Um, so who have we got nearby here? Jeff, sorry, I know you're eating your meal, but go, go and check the reactor again. So we potentially need a maximum. I would say a maximum of, like, one, two... Uh, well, let's stick with the pattern we've got, then. Um, so let's do that. So the maximum I would say that is safe to use is probably another, probably another nine rods. Yeah? I think that's not, oh, so, sorry, eight rods. I think that's not a bad idea. All right, let's, let's roll with that then. So get rid, of, get rid of all this shit. Get out of here. Right, someone make us another eight rods, and then we'll see how it do. But we'll leave that there for today. We've had nuclear physics. We've cloned a Sith Lord. We've got a plan for the long term with our Sith Lord. I think I understand how these nuclear reactors work now. Just just, just mostly guesswork, I will admit. So there could be one or two things I need to work out here. I think this has been pretty successful otherwise. And everybody thought I was going to Chernobyl it. Well, you thought I was going to fill a fucking nuclear reactor. That's next episode. We're going we're gonna to Chernobyl things. Because I've I've got some confidence now. So now's when I completely fuck up. At least historically on the channel. Big shout out to the insane top tier level patrons who made the series possible in the first place. Thank you to Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Sidini, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Donald, Fukuno Vasquez, Fluffinata, Fungus King, Gogola, Sarik, Jimbo, Josh Lynn, Dean Tesla, Justin Wallace, Kanan Carter, Michael Muller, Mr. Smug, Muskratful, Nathan Flores, Necrofenom, Pelvis Presley, Skaz, Shayuch Sinclair, Sir Thor the Swede, Stannis the Manus, The Forsaken One, Toby Cruz, Tom Terror 18, Tyler Kendall, and Vacuous Backus for their support the Insane Tier Levels on Patreon. Thank you for helping out with this channel. Thanks for making it to an hour to take sponsorships. So many people keep sending me game keys, and every single time I look at them, I think, the people don't want this. I'm getting a game out of it. Some people have offered to pay, but I'm like, people don't want this. They just want more Rimworld. And we know what we can have more Rimworld. Thanks to those people, the Twitch subscribers, the patrons, including Asaro, Adam Person, Akari, Andrew Wilson, Ben Trope, Betis Max, Betis Valerian, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Connie Two and Seven, Easier to Pronounce Name, Exploding Knees, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, Genji Zerka, Gray, Haji Demar, Hancock, Icy the Great, Irish, Israel, Jay Lara, James Barnes, Jason, Jose, Yoran DeVries, John Holiday, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beard, Justin Block, Justin Walters, Lemon Start, Let's Me, Luana Thomas, Luke Wallace, Monty, Matthew, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Pantamu, Panthapel, Peyton Dennisar, Russian Oligarch, Billionaire, The Bloody Knight, The Insane Pickle, Wesley Grayson, Will Wade, Wolfie, Yorker, Zach Peller, and Zico too. Thank you for your support, my friends. And I'll see you all tomorrow to burn a fucking hole to the earth itself.